Hi, welcome, Simon here, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on how to set up a TP-Link router, AX5400. And in this video, I'll be talking the port forwarding as well. So it's gonna be the installation guide, setting up as a brand new router, plus how to do a port forwarding in this video. All right, so let's move the box away. So in the box, you would have the power adapter that powers up the router so this is the power adapter that comes with it the router itself installation guide and ethernet cable all right so the installation guide is pretty much very straightforward it shows you how to plug it in i'll explain it in this video as well as well the um, the wi-fi card by default it does comes with the wi-fi id and the Wi-Fi password. If you want to use the default Wi-Fi ID and password, make sure you keep the info, the Wi-Fi info card on the side uh, for your own reference. But if you're planning to change it to your own Wi-Fi name and password, in this video, I'll walk you through how to do that as well. All right, so the installation guide, let's put it on the side and let's take a look at the router. So pretty much the router has the WAN meaning coming from the internet, your service provider, and it has four ports at the back, allows you to connect to TV, security camera, computers, and whatnot. All right, so let's go ahead and power up the router. So you need to plug in the power adapter jack, push it into the power section that says power, and then press this power button to turn it on. When it's being pressed, it's on. When it's out, that means it's off. Here you can see the power light is flashing so it's doing the reboot booting up the router now let's go ahead and start connecting the ethernet cable this one is my pc as you can see a label as pc because we need to do configuration so let's plug it into any ports any lan ports okay this cable right here is actually my internet service provider that I pay monthly for internet service. It's a modem cable that comes directly from the modem. I'll be plugged into the blue port, which is the WAN port. All right, once you have plugged into the router, let's take a look at the lighting here. You can see that the power cycle is still powering up. The Wi-Fi is up running and the ethernet is orange. Give it a second or two. We're gonna wait until the internet comes up then you know that the I have internet access. So anytime when there's a down of internet, you want to come and check your router. If your light is orange, that means you do not have internet. You might want to reboot the router or the modem or both of them. But if you have a solid green and no internet, then there might be a bigger trouble that you might want to contact the internet service provider. All right, so let me bring you to a different screen to show you how to gain access into the um, into the router. All right, so technically you need to open up a browser, which I use Microsoft Edge here. So I'm gonna open up the Edge and let's go ahead and type in the IP address. So for the IP address is 192.168.0.1. That is the IP address for the TP-Link router. So once you type in the um, Once you type it in, I think we have to reset it. So let me reset the router here because it said local password is, is required. I thought we reset it, the router. So let's press and hold the reset button. Uh, you can use a paper clip or any tiny, um, tiny and, or oh, paper clip is the best. If you can find a paper clip, uh, there is a reset button here at the very end. Uh, press and hold that reset button until the cycle reboots so the auto power light is off as you can see and it rebooted so let's go ahead and wait for the cycle i apologize for the uh, the the reset here it wasn't meant to be reset to show you that um, but the router was turned on earlier before i tried to make the video so I, I thought it, it was reset, but it didn't. So let's reset it again. 
um, let me repeat myself so I'm using not a paper clip this is a a, a drill bit a, a torque screwdriver which is tiny enough for me to press that there's a reset button here a very small hole was able to press and hold it you want to press and hold it down until the light goes off and re reboot itself so that is the reset and hopefully it's back up running now let's go ahead and open up a new tab wait until that orange light comes on uh, goes away at the same time we're gonna type 192.168.0.1 Alright, so the router is reset. You should be getting the same screen as I do. It's asking you to type in a new password. So let's give it a, a, a password here. I am going to type in uh, my password. Alright, once you type in the password, let's get started. This is the step where you're going to do the, um, the installation of the setup process. Select the time zone, I'm in Hawaii, so I'll be selecting Hawaii, click next. And this connection here, if you're not sure whether it's a static or dynamic, please contact your internet provider. Uh, they will tell you if your internet is static or dynamic. Most of the time, if you're residential at home, almost 99% is going to be dynamic IP. So I'm going to click next. Click next. Unable connect, uh, smart connect enable, that's good. Wireless radio enable, that's good. This is where you want to change your Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password. For me, I'm just going to leave it as default, but for you, you should change uh, to what you like for your Wi-Fi name and also the Wi-Fi password. Once you have done that, make sure you write it down in that piece of paper and then you can continue as next. So it's testing the internet connection, it may take a several second, please wait. So let's go ahead and wait. And at the same time, if you did change your Wi-Fi password and the ID, uh, what you want to do is maybe update this sheet of paper it says uh, Wi-Fi card. Make sure you update with your new Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password. It might get handy because sometimes you forget, so you might want to kind of stick it down here, uh, stick it next to your router, so at least you can see it. I mean, it's for residential purpose. Um, hope that there's no stranger that comes in and steal your Wi-Fi. But if it's for business, you might want to keep the card not being exposed and just hide it on the side. So keep your router update, turn on auto update recommended, and then when you wanna update, three in the morning is fine, click next. But for me, I'm not gonna say not now because I wanna get straight to the, um, to the port forwarding here. So we have already set up the Wi-Fi, the router. This is the final step, click next. Uh, you want to skip getting the TP-Link cloud service. I do not want to have the TP-Link cloud service, so I'm going to skip that. And this is where you can tell your entire dashboard of your router. So you have the internet being checked. That means internet is coming into your TP-Link router here. Okay. And then you also show how many devices, mesh devices is connected. If you have mesh devices, but if you don't, um, that's okay. You're just having one router for the whole house. And this is the client where it shows the um, the desktop or your iPad or your iPhone that is being connected. So it has an IP address, um, things like that. All right, let's jump directly straight to advanced settings. We are going to scroll down here. We want to go to what we call um, port forwarding. So go to net forwarding and then port forwarding um, here. You might want to take notes, okay? Let me jump back to the network map here. I only have one device being connected. As you can see here, my LAN is LAN 3 is connected to my PC. If you have a security camera that connects to the LAN 2 or whatever port here, you might want to take notes 
or your Xbox, you might want to take notes. What happened is that when you click to clients, you should be able to see your Xbox listed here, or maybe security camera, or maybe, um, you know, your desktop you want to do a remote so let me give you an example so here it shows that 192.168.0.199 so that is for the desktop what if I have um, Xbox right so my Xbox I can say Xbox is going to be 192.168.0. maybe 200 all right so let's say that is my IP address for the Xbox. You might write it down. It comes in handy. I'll give another example, maybe security camera. You might have been 192.168.0.201. I'm just giving a random number here, okay? Uh, but you might want to refer to this dashboard here, whatever IP address is given by the router. All right, once you know the IP address, go back to advanced, go to net forwarding and port forwarding. Here you want to click add. Service name, let's just say Xbox for now, okay? Device IP address, this is where the dashboard earlier that shows you what the IP address is. Uh, for me, it's 192.168.0.200, right? So let's just say that is the Xbox IP address that I was having. Um, external port meaning that the port meant for the XP, uh, Xbox. So one of the port Xbox required is port 88. So I'm going to put port 88, internal port 88. Protocol, is it a TCP or is it a UDP? So you might want to refer to Xbox website and see what they have to say about the TCP or UDP. All right, if you're not sure, you can select all. Click save. That's one port forward is being opened for Xbox port 88. Okay, let's do another one. We're gonna click add. Let's just say this is for my desktop. Um, I'm gonna say desktop remote or remote desktop. Okay, in the remote desktop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select an IP address, which is 192.168.0.199. Why .199? That is the desktop here that I am having this desktop that runs on .199 that I want to remote in. So I'm gonna do that. And the RDP port for a remote is 3389, 3389, and you click save. Okay, so you get the idea, each of these device IP address is referring to that device itself, like your desktop, or your security camera, or the Xbox, things like that, okay? And then the port here is what is uh, being built in and required to have the port being open, and that's where you want to put in the port. And then protocol can be UDP or TCP depending on the manufacturer. So you might want to refer to that. And just hit save and you're all done. So that's pretty much it. That is the port forwarding. Uh, simple as that. Xbox has a lot more port forwarding, not just that. Um, you, might, you can say Xbox port forwarding record and see what it says. So pretty much in in Xbox port forwarding, we have uh, quite a bit of the uh, ports that needs to be open. Uh, you can see that port 88 is UDP, so you might want to come here and let's do an edit. Port 88 is UDP, save, right? And then let's see port, port 3074 is UDP and TCP. So you can come here, click X, give it a name, Xbox. 3074 this is just a name and then the IP address is 192.168.0.200 and here you want to put 3074 3074 and it's UDP and TCP so you put all and click save so you have a port Xbox being open 3074 which is required by here there's another port 50, port 80, port 500. So each of the port that needs to be open, you need to add it here for your, each of your Xbox. 
Alright, so I hope this video is helpful. If you do find the video is helpful, please um, go ahead and smash the like button for me and feel free to subscribe to the channel and uh, comment below if you have any question. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye now.